Hello everyone. Today we are in Juneau, Alaska. This is the second stop on our northbound Alaskan cruise. The first one was Ketchikan. We booked an excursion to the Mendenhall Glacier and then a trip to the Salmon Hatchery. This was July and the weather was pretty nice, not raining, around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The tour buses line up right at the dock, so it's a short walk from the ship to the bus. Once on the bus, the driver doubled as a tour guide and gave us lots of information about Juno's history. She even pointed out to us where, if you look really closely, you can see Russia. The Mendenhall Glacier is located about 12 miles outside of Juneau, so it took us around 30 minutes to get there. The ride went quickly as the tour guide driver told us lots of stories about Juneau, the Domeless Capitol Building, the Red Dog Saloon, and so on. She also pointed out Douglas Island as we were driving down the main road, which hugs the coastline. And we saw lots of eagles perched on top of light poles all along the highway. So the bus ride was very interesting and went by very quickly. The bus led us off in front of the Mendenhall Visitor Center behind a line of other tour buses. This is a very popular attraction and for good reason. There is a welcome booth with information and a map of the different trails around the glacier, as well as a whiteboard with the various tours and their bus numbers so you can easily find your bus back. Important note, there are only two options for bathrooms, none of them on the trails, so make sure you do your business before you start out on any of the trails. One bathroom is up in the visitor center, the other is down here near the information booth. The visitor center has some interesting things to see. There is a short 15 minute film and there's a lot of information about glaciers, but if your time is limited, I would suggest skipping the visitor center and starting on the hike. We wanted to see what was up there first, so we went up a steep set of stairs. There is an elevator that takes you up there as well. Just look for it if you think the steps are too hard to climb. There is also a ramp that winds around and around and around again for wheelchairs or baby strollers. The view from the top of the steps of the visitor center is spectacular, and there is lots to do and see in the visitor center, but we were eager to follow the trail and get much closer to the glacier. By the way, this short tunnel leads to the elevator that takes you up to the visitor center. We visited the center after the hike, more about that later. Let's first get a view of the glacier. And there is the glacier. The Mendel Hall Glacier is one of the 38 large glaciers that flow from something called the Juneau Ice Field, which is basically 1,500 square miles of rock, snow, and ice. The average annual snowfall in the Juneau Ice Field is more than 100 feet of snow. Off we went in search of a better view, until we came to a fork in the road. We decided to first go down the shorter route to Photo Point. We keep walking and walking towards the glacier. It's just a bit more. I can see it up ahead. And here it is. And now I know why they call this photo point. If you are watching this on a smartphone, the size of the screen does not do this glacier any justice. It is just incredible to see. So we took in the incredible view and took lots of pictures and video along with everyone else taking pictures. With smartphones and also with real cameras. You don't see real cameras around that much now that smartphones are being used as cameras, but here where you're trying to capture the beauty of nature, this is where you will find lots of people with real cameras. After taking in the site, we turned around to find the Nugget Falls Trail. Now let's start back at the fork in the trail and have a look at Nugget Falls. This trail is a bit longer than the one to Photo Point. This is a two mile round trip. You need an hour to hike round trip to Nugget Falls. The trail to Photo Point was an easy 15 minute walk on a paved surface. 
There were some other trails listed, some as short as 30 minutes, others as long as two and a half hours. We didn't have time for that one. The trails are all very clearly marked with arrows pointing you in the right direction. The air was very fresh and the weather was perfect for Alaska. Along the way we saw lots of people walking with their dogs and lots of families and their kids. There were signs to keep us on track whenever we came to a fork in the trail. At one point in the trail we saw a memorial plaque for a friendly wolf named Romeo who lived in the area. All the tour guides mention him. There is even a book written about this wolf and at the visitor center there is a wolf exhibit with Romeo's recorded howls. We continued on our way. It was really a very pleasant walk. I would not call this a hike, really just a nice walk. The trail is paved with gravel and it is very clean and clear of obstructions and the ground is very level. So if you have the time and can walk for an hour, it is a great excursion and the reward is another spectacular view. Here you can see people paddling their way in. I saw another excursion listed for that. You can also take a helicopter ride and land on the glacier and walk around on it. So here we are at Nugget Falls. You can hear the thunder of the falls. And over beyond the falls is the glacier. And you can see the blue ice from here, but this is definitely not the best angle to view the glacier. It's still awesome to stand here and hear the rushing water of the falls and to see the glacier beyond. I couldn't resist one selfie. We headed back to where we started out near the visitor center and here we got another view of the glacier and came across a sign explaining how the glaciers turn rock into flower as they move over the bedrock. Okay, one last look at the glacier together with everyone else and now let's head up to the visitor center. In the visitor center we wanted to see the film which plays every 20 minutes but first we needed to use the restrooms. The men's room was a quick in and out for my husband, but the line for the ladies room was, well, very long, of course. Next we took a look at the exhibits while we waited for the film to begin. There was a large glass walled area with a spectacular view of the glacier and a ranger explaining about glaciers and holding out a tray with a 200 year old piece of glacier. And anyone who wanted to touch it could, and yes, it was cold, but it was really kind of neat to touch a 200 year old piece of ice from a glacier. There was also a telescope set up for people to get a closer look of the glacier. Some people took pictures of the glacier through the telescope. I tried to video it through the telescope but the camera was not focusing through the lens of the scope. Oh well. Time for the film. The film was around 15 minutes long and explained how glaciers are formed and the effects of time on glaciers. The film also covered the wildlife in the region. It was narrated in English and also had subtitles in English, which was very helpful since the theater was a little noisy. That was a great treat to see the Mendenhall Glacier. And we were lucky to have beautiful weather as well. Now it's time to find our bus and head out for our next excursion to the Salmon Hatchery. This was really an incredible excursion. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the subscribe or like button or both. And thank you for watching. Bye.